Welcome to the Podness with Face, Pat, and Tiz. It's time to go against the grain, man. So, I'll start it off, man. My number one against the grain this week. Uh, contrary to popular belief, man, I think Mad TV it was funnier than SNL, SNL back in the day, man. During its run, I can see that. I mean, like, I, 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 they came with some heat, man. It was, it was original. Um, at a certain point after the SNL, they re- redo the same concepts with just different people, man. So, uh, I dig Mad TV way better than SNL. You might be right. Um, some, about it he, he look like a man. Still one of the oh, that shit's still hilarious. That's still hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and SNL had a slump period where it was just corny. Yeah, it was just it was real right. corny. Yeah, like yeah. it was good in the eighties. First two or three seasons of Mad TV, they were fucking. Mm-hmm. And then it it kind of like gave you a little bit like people were um they had a void because uh, Living Color was off the air. Yep, pretty much because they came right after Living Color, and it it kind of was mm-hmm. like the in between the Living Color and SNL, somewhat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Damn right. Now moving on to my second against the grain this week. Um, I think we should normalize telling people how 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 their babies really look, man. I don't think it's wrong to tell somebody if their baby not cute. Oh shit! Yeah, I, I feel like if the baby is ugly, the parents knew way before anybody else told you. You sure so you ugly. shouldn't feel no type of way for somebody telling you the truth about your kid. If my children was ugly, <laughs> when I saw them, I'd have knew it. And hey, if anybody told me, oh, damn, Whew. that that that's a strong little baby. I know it. I said the same thing when he was born. Oh, but he oh, gonna be something. Keep the pacifier in the mouth. So, I, mean, <laughs> I think we should normalize telling people how they babies really look when we see them for the first time. Don't be stunned. Don't be forced to lie. Don't be trying to be creative with your words. Tell the truth. Let the oh, truth man, set you free. Got one patch of hair. Yeah, I ain't gonna fuck with the baby, but I, will, I do think we should normalize. Hey, normalize being honest, people. Let's get it. <laughs> oh, That's my the guess, Green. What about y'all, fuck you, man? Oh, man. Baby did not ask to be here. Um, well, my first one this week is I just hate barbecue and hot sauce. I know a lot of black <laughs> Probably would uh, be pissed at me about that, but I hate that shit. I don't see the purpose of it. It doesn't fit to me. And I don't mean like, oh, well, this hot sauce you're going to love, or this barbecue is amazing. No, I mean just all of it. it. It can really go. Like, if you want to put some on some shit, get some mambo sauce. You got yum yum sauce. You got all these other fucking great ass. You got ranch. You got ketchup. You got whatever else. But fuck barbecue and hot sauce. <laughs> I've never tasted mambo sauce, unfortunately, and I'm from the DMV. I so mean, what does it taste like? It depends on which one you get. If you get the straight sweet one, then it's like a. Damn it! I don't even know how to describe it, yo. It's it's like mambo. No, it's not. Yeah, I don't, it's, it's like it tastes like DC. <laughs> okay. That's about okay. All. Like, it's, like, I don't, it's like it's no other song. Like, like the closest thing I can <clears throat> of, maybe Polynesian sauce is like in that same realm, I guess. Okay, bet then. But it's not it's it don't taste the same as Polynesian sauce though. So I don't I don't know what to put it in, but it's it's mambo sauce. Every, it's also got the, it, every the, time. Sweet and, the sweet and hot one that's a spicier one. So then mm. like, it's just a different kick to it too. So it just depends on which one you get. But mambo sauce, especially straight from the DMV, but if you can't get it straight from like straight from a DC county spot, capital city, uh mambo sauce, you can get it in Walmart. It's fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. It's fucking amazing. When you taste the go-go music, start playing in your head. Bro, start all of a sudden beating your feet. Your taste buds. Okay. Right then. Like that shit. Like, I put my 
whole family, like, everybody was like, yo, uh, I asked for that shit for my birthday. And my cousin gave me that shit for my birthday. And I put the whole Give me your number. The wife and son, like, and now literally eat a bottle of mambo sauce in the fridge at all times. Like, it has to be replenished. If it's halfway done, let's get the other one in because that means the next time we have dinner, that shit is gone. Like, cook mumble sauce on Saturday. Fuck barbecue. <laughs> right. Um, and then my my other one is, I don't believe that like that that not liking things mean that you hate. I believe that maybe you just really don't like that shit. I agree. Like. I feel like we've taken this hating thing too far to the point of like everything that somebody don't like, they hating on it. No, maybe it's just not your cup of tea. Like people ain't gotta like every damn thing just because you did it. I hope you successful at it, but I don't like that shit. That shit whack. Good luck to you. I hope somebody else like it so that you can, you know, generate your revenue, but you won't get a dollar from me for it because the shit whack. And that ain't being a hater. <laughs> That's being realistic and, ha- and having a mind. So, uh, yeah. It's the brain. I feel, I feel you on that shit. People, I feel you on that shit. Sometimes you just don't like stuff. Sometimes you, you just don't like stuff at, at, at all. Man. I don't like a lot of shit, so, you know. I, you know, I don't like... I don't like when people like stuff too much. That and then and, and then it gets to the point where it gets to tizzes against the grain, where it's like because they like stuff too much or whatever, you're hating. But I, that's, I, I don't like that. Like what you like, <clears throat> other people for not like just because you think it's cool mm-hmm. that it is for everybody. Just means that you think it's cool. So as long as you think it's cool, it shouldn't bother that much if somebody else don't like. It's more for you, whatever that is. But um, my first against the grain is this: um, if you have utter ever uttered the words as an alpha male, it might be a chance you're not an alpha. Because the whole <laughs> definition, the hmm, it's matrix. I don't disagree. I, I just, I, it's like the whole. It's one of those things where like. You can't say you the greatest of all time. Somebody else got to acknowledge that. You know, well, I mean, you can, but you know, like you got to be at a certain point that people are just like, if you do say it, you're like, well, you, you, you nigga got a point. What or whatever. Is, is that old <clears throat> adage that men have, real men have, what's understood don't got to be said. Like, exactly. When, when an alpha runs across another alpha, it ain't like you got to announce yourself as one. It's just, I recognize it because I, I I sense the same presence as I have. Real recognize. It looks familiar. It yeah. It ain't that 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 deep as people be trying to make it these days, man. Like, if you a real man, another real man is gonna respect it because they the vibe is there. It's not like you gotta come in with a sign on your chest and a t shirt that say, "I'm an alpha." Mm. <laughs> That's corny as fuck. That's like saying hey. like. I, I'm a person. Like, nigga, I can see you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> what the fuck? I breathe today, too. <laughs> Look at me. Breathe. <clears throat> so, yeah. Yeah. Um, and plus, you're, you're, you're setting yourself up for the okie doke in the long run. Especially if you say that around people. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you just set yourself up. Um... <clears throat> On another note, my other uh, against the grain is that um, I don't think women are the emotional monolith that the media tends to portray they are a lot. I do feel like they are more in tune with their emotions to the point more than men to the point that if there's a if they have something that bothers them, they know exactly what triggered that, and they can tell you exactly more. Then, um, and I, uh, <clears throat> mm. I can, I, I'll agree that they can tell you how they feel about something, but they don't usually know why. Because you know why? They don't remember facts. They remember the feeling. Mm-hmm. 
which is why men tend to get in trouble so much because we start talking about, well, I didn't do that. But they don't remember exactly what you did. They just <laughs> felt about what you did. It's that old thing. Yeah. You know how they said, like, people will forget how what, uh, what you did, but they won't forget how you made them feel or whatever. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. With women, that shit is just heightened because, like, their emotional, their emotional process, <laughs> like, even when they talk, the reason they talk more, like, they'll tell the same story, but they'll add way more in it because as they're going through the story, they're remembering how they feel. And as they say certain words, it triggers a certain emotion that takes them to another thought about how they felt about that. And, and that's why you get these more long story. Like, it's literally how they're socialized the process. They come, you know what I mean? But yeah, I, I definitely, uh, yeah. They not emotional. That's, that's why I say. I definitely roll with you there. Yeah, that's why I'm saying the, that emotional monolith part is that's where they might get things twisted, where it gets to like they have a point that is a trigger and it triggers some other triggers or whatever. And it goes into that a little bit more. But they are good yeah, at I can see how you describe it. Because men are, we struggle sometimes. Yes. On, like, <clears throat> Like we know we feel something, but we don't know exactly how. That's to, that's what I was doing at. Yeah, to like process it and would it would exactly to call it to even deal with it. Whereas women can kind of be like, okay, I was frustrated. No, I wasn't angry. I was frustrated, and it was you know what I mean like they can make those like nuanced understanding the, the, like exactly what the emotion is, but what exactly the event was that triggered it. Oh, I don't know that they more in tune there. I'm, I'm I might have to uh, just play devil's well, advocate. That one, what you just said, I, I think you just explained what I was thinking a bit more oh, we, accurately or whatever. Yeah, they, yeah, they do. Mostly as soon as far as like what they feel like, we struggle with that a lot as men. Like, we like, all right, I know I feel something's weird, but I don't know yeah, what this feeling is. I don't know if I'm just sad. I don't know if I just really just don't feel like doing this. I don't know if I'm tired. Like, it's kind of just, I know it's something ain't right. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Like, some ain't right. <laughs> Is it some ain't right? Brain on that I'm one. chilling. Oh. <clears throat> that's like the male. That's like the male emotional um, spectrum. Some ain't right. I'm chilling. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> some ain't right. <laughs> ain't right. I don't know about this. And this, I'm good. There you go. <laughs> no lies detected. No lies detected. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's my my against the grains. Well, since we going against the grain, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, take over here. I don't know if this is a rant, but it's definitely. <laughs>